Okay. Uh, what have you learned from, yes, that's exactly what I was doing. Jazakallah khair, Sister Saima. And what have you learned from, okay, people have already said, you should not have mustard seed of arrogance. And they will not enter Jannah. No obedience. Yes, this is a rule. If you remember, no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the creator. That is the most important rule that you can take for yourself. Um, alhamdulillah. And that's going to be respect your parents, repent, believe in righteous deeds. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Shirk is invincible like the spider's web. Okay, alhamdulillah. We have a lot to cover today. So your take home points were um, that you are going to not rely on anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about your connection with the Quran? How do you think you're going to do that? Yes, Sister Zagona has said, I have to learn and spread and apply the Quran in my life correctly. Good, good. And, uh, you know, what I'd like you to do for homework is, you know, write down to me names of five messengers you've learned about and their nations. Okay, in from Surah Al Qasas. It's going to be from Surah Al Qasas. You're going to write down five messengers that you've learned about and, you know, their nations, what went wrong and what was their punishment. Okay, and then share it with some people. Okay, alhamdulillah. Just a uh, reminder that I liked for myself, so I'm sharing it with all of you as well. Sheikh Husaymin, rahimahullah, he said, focus on asking Allah in abundance for four habits in Ramadan. Two which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and two which are a necessity. As for the two which are pleasing to your Lord, the first is shahada, la ilaha illallah, so increase in la ilaha illallah. Uh, and then the second is seeking repentance. And alhamdulillah, by now, we are in just 21. Alhamdulillah, all of you have got in the habit now of saying astaghfirullah, isn't it? Even if you're not doing the spear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you all got in the habit of saying, ya Allah, forgive me. Yes, okay, alhamdulillah. And then as for the two which are necessity, the sheikh is saying the two which are necessity, they are asking Allah for paradise, for Jannah, and seeking refuge in Allah from the fire. So, you know, these are four things that you're going to do, uh, which of which two are absolutely necessary. And alhamdulillah, you all have increased in your in your asking of Jannah. And um, alhamdulillah, all of you I see, you know, you send me messages and I'm reading your messages whilst on, when I'm teaching you on Zoom. That every time that an ayah talks about Jannah, you, some, one of you is going to message me and saying that, Ya Allah, I asked for Jannah. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you all have got into this habit. Alhamdulillah, you have all also got in this habit that when you read ayahs of punishment, you say, Astaghfirullah. Allah, ya Allah, protect me. Ya Allah, not make me of those. Okay, alhamdulillah. Very quickly on, you know, on the ayah that we ended, I thought I have not done enough justice to it. So please bear with me. You know, when we talked about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the weakest of the houses is that of, Allah subhanahu wa uses the word awhana, ayah 41. I'm talking about ayah 41 of Surah Al-Ankabut. And we, we mentioned that, you know, Ankabut is a female spider and it's a female spider that spins the, the 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 web and look people at that time the science was not progressed enough to ascertain the gender of the spider and it is from the from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us so what did we learn from this I just wanted to go through it bear with me please meaning that spider web can can somebody rely on the spider web no and you know even if the web has been there, you know, you've left your property and, you know, and you've come back after a year or two and you see there's loads of spider webs, is, you know, they're just going to, is it going to take long for you to remove it? No. And no matter how closely and how beautiful, how beautiful knitting is done of the spider web, it is weak. So this, what does the spider web represent? Uh, you know, are things people rely on other than Allah? You know, they may look beautiful, they may look as if, you know, they're strong, but they are not. You know, so anyone who relies on, uh, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have been given the parable of a spider web. Yeah, the spider webs can be the saints of the time, the idols of the time. You know, sometimes it can be the living people. Sometimes, like we said, like, like we discussed that, you know, living people can be, you know, people are going to think, how am I going to live without this person? So then that person becomes your, you know, the something that you rely on. And, you know, we should not rely on uh, on anyone. You know, for example, parents, they rely on their children. They rely that when they grow up, you know, I'm working hard now, but when these children grow up, they're going to look after me. 
And, you know, when they don't do that, when they grow up, then what do they do? They remind the children, you know, when you were little, I used to do this. I used to sacrifice myself. I used to work hard so much for you. So now you tell me. Now my question for you is, can the parents do that? And tell me, you know, we've done something similar to this in, uh, in Surah Baqarah. You know, when you're reminding someone of the favors that you've done, what are you do? What's going to happen? Yeah. No, you cannot do that. And what's going to happen if you remind someone of the favors? Even if the parents remind. Yeah. What is going to happen? All the deeds go to waste. Jazakallah, Sister Tabassum and Sister Fatima, that, yeah, and Sister Yasmin, that, um, yeah, and Sister Asma, that you lose all your reward. Okay, so all that you did, if you made the intention, you did it for Allah, Allah subhanahu is going to reward you. But all that hard work of yours gone in vain. So you know what we should do? We should rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make, you know, things easy for us. And what is the key message here? We need, to, we need to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the fact that, you know, like I said to you, that, uh, you know, spider web is built by a female. And, you know, it is weak and flimsy, although it holds on to something strong, but it is weak and flimsy, just like how shirk is. It is not clearly visible. Unless you walk into it, you will, you will not feel it. So that is shirk as well. Shirk is also not visible. So, you know, that is why we are asked to make the dua uh, for ourselves. And so, and also the base of the shirk is weak. Then, you know, spider web is a 2D structure. Yeah, it cannot stand firm on the ground. It does not have any roof. It is a house that has no roof, no walls to offer security. Yeah, it doesn't fulfill the purpose of a house. So does shirk give you security? No, it does not. Yeah, and you know, spider spins its own web. Whereas compared to the birds, they use materials other than, you know, other materials. So, you know, and, and what does it show us? that shirk is made up, something made up on their own. It is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the spider, if you realize, if you've observed the spiders, they sit in the middle of the way, in the middle of the web, in isolation, and they wait for their prey to get stuck in. Yeah, yeah, and similar is the case for us. You know, the shir people of shirk, they wait for you to be insecure, and then they attack you. So be careful, yeah? Sometimes shirk is so subtle that you don't know that you're doing shirk. Like I said to you, if you depend on someone, you'll say, oh, doctor, if you didn't, if you did not say, had you not been there, my daughter's life would not be, you, you saved my daughter's life. Be careful of this word because this is, you know, a minor shirk. You, you need to add the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doctor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to cure my daughter. So you need to be careful of your words. Yeah. So sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes shir can be subtle and sometimes it can be obvious. So we need to recite the dua, uh, you know, to be safe from shirk. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes um, um, shirk is used as a show, you know, because when the problem arises, you know, um, that's when people go in, um, you know, they go and seek help uh, from other than, you know, the people who are on Islam. So what is the key principle that we learn? We need to remember, no one can help me. No one can guide me. No one can do anything for me. Okay, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we are not going to be trapped in this web of shirk. Okay. And you see, why are people trapped in the first, in the first instance? You know, the ones who do shirk, how are they trapped? Why? You know, why? Because of either wanting money or power or love, isn't it? And, you know, I was thinking so many times, and especially, you know, where I live, like I told you, you know, business of all this rukia is very rife here and people are charging humongous amounts of money. You, you know, and what, is, what I'd like you to take home is you know, when people are having problems in their families or you're having problems in your health, don't conclude it's magic straight away, okay? You know, and don't start thinking, I need to get someone, you know, they're going to come. At this moment, you know, the people can charge anywhere where I live, anywhere between 300 pounds for coming to your house and all they're going to do is recite Surah Al-Baqarah, yeah? So this is a test of your Iman. 
understand that it is a test of your iman that you have become so weak in your iman you can't rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't you think now that it is Allah who has sent this test my way you know sometimes it doesn't have to be magic even it can be a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also even if the, this person comes to recite the Quran what's the problem with you why can't you recite it yourself you know and understand that all these people they're doing it for business you know, they begin with sincere intentions, but do, don't you think that the shaitan can influence them? Shaitan is going to come and, you know, he, they can deviate them anytime. And, you know, uh, and then because that person gets deviated, the one who's coming to your house and reciting the rukya can get deviated. Can he not become the cause of deviation of others? Are you understanding with um, um, me my, what am I trying to say, my dears? What I'm trying to say is don't call people to your house. Don't do, you are yourself. You have the Quran, the most powerful thing in your house. And you know, the, the, like I said to you, if you have a pain, if someone else has the paracetamol, how can it help them? How can they, how can the, someone else taking the painkiller is going to help your, your illness? Okay. So don't involve any middle man, man between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And, you know, and, and have faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all in charge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get rid of all the problems. Yeah. So, you know, and you see that people, so many people, they, they you know, like I said to you, I know someone and that person goes to people's houses and they do, and they do recite Rukia. And so many people, you'd be surprised that the people they go to their houses are people who have studied the Quran. People who have studied the Quran properly. And these people are calling them and saying, oh, you know, I have problem in my house. Can you please come and do Rukia in my house? And I'm surprised. I, I'm gobsmacked when I hear this. I couldn't tell her because, you know, she is someone who is more knowledgeable than myself. And she was saying that I called this sheikh and this and this and I did the Rukia and I was surprised. And, and uh, you know, so your take home is going to be that you're going to focus on, on your and build trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is all powerful. Okay. Allah is above and beyond whatever anybody does. And you have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can recite yourself as well. I wish I could talk more about it, but we don't have time. Also, you know, another business that is rife is doing istikhara. Now you tell me, if you have a problem, why would you ask someone else to do istikhara? Do you know what is the meaning of istikhara? It is seeking counsel with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his advice. And here it's become a business. People charge 50 pounds, 60 pounds to do istikhara. And you know, they're just thriving on other people's ignorance. That's all I can say. People are ignorant. How can, how can you are having a problem? You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, you, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, you know, to direct you to what is good for yourself. How can someone else do istikhara for you? Because, uh, you know, I'd like you all to recite the dua of istikhara today. Once you end the class, make sure you read it. Then, it, then ask me, how can someone else do istikhara for you? Okay. So, you know, we need to. And also the fact that, you know, people say you're going to see this color and that color and you're going to see this dream and that dream. Nothing of that sort. You're not going to see a dream. You're not going to have any color in your dream. It is your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put contentment in your heart and things will go the way, you know, if it's meant for you, things are going to become apparent to you or, you know, things are going to become like constricted for you and you will know that, you know, this is not something that I should pursue. All you have to do is, the sunnah way of doing istikhara is you do proper wudu and then you pray two rak'ah and then after that you recite the dua of istikhara and if you don't know the meaning in Arabic then recite it in Arabic and then recite it in English. Okay? And istikhara can be done for anything, for anything in your life. Anything you're going out to buy, you know, you, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rab, if, is this good for me? Make it happen. If, it, if this is good for my dunya and akhirah, Make it happen. If it is not, turn it away and turn me away from it. So anything and everything, we have limited it to a marriage and, you know, um, whatever, you know, people think. But if the hara is for anything and everything. Yeah. Everything, you know, deen has become a business. No, <laughs> we are, we are. Okay, now let's begin. Um, surah, uh, just 21. Alhamdulillah.
سبحان الله ويا بيهايند أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتلو ما أوهي إليك من الكتاب وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون Recite, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what has been revealed to you of the book, the Qur'an, and perform a salah. Verily, a salah prevents uh, al-fahsha and al-munkar, meaning the disbelief and polytheism. And remembering, um, uh, praising um, you, uh, praising of you, Allah, in front of the angels is greater indeed than remembering you, uh, uh, praising, etc., Allah, in prayers. And Allah knows what you do. So we are being told here, what are the uh, benefits of praying? Okay, and first about Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, revealed the Quran so that it is to be recited. And it is not to be recited just for yourself, but, uh, you know, for your personal worship, but to recite to others as well. And then the next thing is after the recitation, what is mentioned is that we should establish a salah. Because the characteristic of a salah is being told to us that it prohibits a person from committing immorality and wrongdoing. So underline that we've been told what the salah do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us punctual in our salah. May, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us um, to, um, to pray salah as the right of it is to be done. Okay, so what does it do? It prevents, it prohibits a person from committing immorality and doing any wrong. And asala destroys the sins of a person. It also helps get rid of the past sins and helps get rid of the present sins of the person. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that after salah, what should you do? Wala dhikrullahi akbar, meaning the remembrance of Allah. So alhamdulillah, I'm sure you all are reciting 33 times subhanallah, 33 times alhamdulillah, 34 times Allahu akbar. Yeah. And then you are also doing, uh, you are doing your tasbihat. Yeah, that comes into the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah knows that which you do. Allah is aware of all our hidden actions and all our apparent actions. And do not argue with the people of the scripture except in a way that is best. Except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and, and our God and your God is one. And we are Muslims in submission to him. So what are we meant? What is the manners being taught to us that we, when we are talking to the people of the book, we are going to be humble and we are not going to, uh, we are not going to mock them. We're not going to scream at them. We are going to be humble. If you can just give me a moment, please. So we've been told, how are we going to talk to the people of the book? It is, um, we should not be screaming, we should, we should be humble. And we should talk to them on a common ground. Um, um, we we should not talk to them saying that you know your religion is wrong and this and that always start from that common ground ayah 47 and thus we have sent down the book the quran um, to you and and those and those to whom we previously gave the scripture believe in it and among these people are those who believe in it and none reject our verses except the disbelievers meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that, you know, the ones who truly believe in the books, in the books that were revealed, you know, uh, also believe in the Quran. So, you know, we don't want, uh, and what I'm telling you is that 
you know, what I'm interpreting the meaning is that just because of our bad behavior, we don't want them to be, you know, not accepting Islam because they believe in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is in their books. And what when they see that the Muslims are behaving so awkwardly and in a bad manner, what they are going to do is they're going to be refrained from Islam. So, you know, we're going to be the cause of them getting away from the truth. And you did not recite it before, uh, and you did not recite before it any uh, scripture, and nor did you inscribe one with your right hand. Otherwise, the falsifiers would have said, uh, would have had cause for doubt. Meaning, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, before he became the prophet, he was um, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was unlettered, and there there is a reason behind it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that, you know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know how to read, did not, you know, he was not well read and he, he did not know how to write. And, you know, also we learn one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, nor did you inscribe one with your right hand, underline that. We, we being told that we should try our utmost to use our right hand for writing. Okay, because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. So, you know, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was unlettered? Because people would claim otherwise that you've made up this Quran. So this was a you know a refutation that that the reason why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not was you know was unlettered is because then when Quran he when he brought the Quran, people would not say you made it up. This is because you were a master in poetry, you were a master in writing, and hence you created this. Rather, the Quran is distinct is distinct verses preserved within the chest of those who have been given knowledge. And and none reject our verses except the wrongdoers. And they say, why are not the signs sent down to, uh, to him from his Lord? Say, the signs are only with Allah and I am only a clear warner. So we know this pattern of them talking and it's the same pattern and it is not sufficient for them that we reveal to you the book which is recited to them. Meaning, is the Quran not enough of a miracle? You know? Indeed in, indeed, in that is mercy and reminder for those who believe, meaning Quran is a mercy. Why? Because after reading the Quran, people change. And I want you to reflect on yourselves. Have you not changed? After reading all, Alhamdulillah, you've heard just up till just 20. Have you not become humble than before? Have you not become quieter than before? Yeah. Is your focus not on Akhirah? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. It is a mercy and reminder for those who believe. Yeah. And, you know, uh, is it not that now you are more careful of what is good and what is bad and you stay away, away from what is bad? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here. So alhamdulillah for Quran. Say sufficient is Allah between you and between me and you as a witness. He knows what is in the heavens and the earth. And they who have believed in falsehood and disbelieved in Allah, it is those who are the losers. And when they and they urge you to hasten the punishment, and if not for the decree of a specified term, punishment would have reached them. But it will surely come to them suddenly when they perceive not. And we know this from the previous nations that this is what happened. They urge you to hasten the punishment. Indeed, hell will be encompassing of the disbelievers. On the day of judgment, we will cover them from above them and from below their feet. And it is said, and it, it is said, taste the result of what you used to do. May Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And uh, and we know Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the person who will have the least uh, punishment from amongst the hellfire on the day of resurrection will be the man under whose arch of feet and will be placed a smoldering ember and because of that his brain will boil meaning the heat is going to be so intense and this is Abu Talib he's going to be given this punishment and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said the fire will eat up the human body except the mark caused by the frustration so what do we say? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of fire Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-nar Allahumma ajirni min al-nar Allahumma ajirni min al-nar and I'll do it all for all of us Allahumma ajirna min al-nar Allahumma ajirna min al-nar Allahumma ajirna min al-nar Ameen ya Rabb Ayah number 56 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us me and you 
Subhanallah, ya ibadi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, asking us, oh my servants, who alladina amanu, those who have believed, indeed my earth is spacious, so worship me. Meaning, do not compromise wherever you are, do not compromise on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah says his earth is vast. So, you know, don't be limited to, you know, because of certain things. And, you know, if a country imposes on you that you you cannot be, you cannot be praying here, or, you know, you live in a country where you, you know, they say from today, you're, you're not allowed to wear your hijab. What are you going to do? For economic reasons, you're going to take your hijab off? No, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says my earth is vast. And if, you have, if you're fearing money, don't worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razaq. Okay, we're not supposed to compromise in our religion. At the same time, I, I you know, if, if you're living in a non-Muslim country where they allow you to, you know, do your worship as you as you please, and they are not harming you, and and you know, where you don't have to compromise in your religion, it's it's okay to live there. You know, don't feel bad. The best is living in a Muslim country. But then, don't you know, if the country is not giving you problem, then it's okay. I fifty seven. Every soul shall taste death. So we know that underlying this, that we are not going to live here forever. And then to us, you will be returned. So, And what is the meaning of that? Meaning you, we all are going to be accountable for whatever we have done in this life. And those who have believed and done righteous deeds, we will, assure, we will surely assign to them paradise, elevated chambers beneath which rivers flow, wherein, uh, wherein they abide eternally. Excellent is the reward of the righteous workers. Now, this reward is for who? The ones who worked hard, the ni'ma ajrul amilin, the workers, the workers who strove in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were not lazy, they worked really, really hard. Yeah, and the reward is going to be something really special. What is it? Chambers that are elevated. You see, in a building, the, the most expensive flats are the ones that is that, that are high, yeah, not the lower ones. So, and, and, and of course, we cannot compare Jannah to anything to do with the dunya, but it's just an example. So the reward is going to be elevated chambers. And, and who are these people who are going to be getting this reward? May Allah make us of them. Those who have been patient and upon their Lord, they rely. So now, underline this, you know now, if you want to go to Jannah, what are the two things that you're going to do? You are going to have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every matter of your religion, in every matter of your dunya. You're going to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever befalls you, you're going to be patient on it. And you know, we are going to be tested. For sure, we know that we are going to be tested. Uh, and, and how many a, create, uh, a creature carries are not on its own provision? Allah provides for it and Allah provides for you also. And he is hearing and knowing. So, you know, yeah, people who have fear of the future, what's going to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding. Yeah, yeah, and we need to remind ourselves that, you know, whatever I have, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given to me up till now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for me in the future. Have you ever seen birds? Do they have kitchens? Do they store, in, you know, uh, a 20 kg or 10 kg of flour or rice in their, in their nests? They don't. They trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides them. They leave their house empty stomach and they return to their nest full, full. And then they are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only humans where we fear. So, you know, you're going to buy X amount of toilet rolls and X amount of this and that. And you have not only your kitchen, but you have a store where you're going to, you know, you're going to be all, you know, full up to the brim. And you're going to be very proud that you've got everything. Subhanallah, look at the state of the human being who does not know they're going to live tomorrow, but they store for as if they're going to be living for six months. Yeah, and any any creature, except, you know, the ones who hibernate, they store. And other than that, you know, the fish, do they have storehouses? No. So, in you know, there's a hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if the son of Adam were to run from his provisions, which Allah had decreed for him, the way he runs from death, then his risk would reach him. Meaning what is decreed for you and me is going to come to me. Yeah. You know, so just like how death is going to reach us all, it, it, the provision that is meant for us is going to reach us. If you ask them who created the heavens and the earth and subjected the sun and the moon, and they would surely say Allah, then how are they deluded? Meaning they know. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentions us a sign of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah extends provision for whom he wills of his servants and restricts of him. Indeed, Allah of all things is knowing. So this is another sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you ask them who sends the rain from the sky and gives life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness, and you know, we know they surely say Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah, but most of them do not reason. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the dunya and this worldly life is not but a diversion and an amusement underlying. Um, so this is a place where people just, you know, they think it is as a a a place of amusement is just temporary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. And indeed, the, hum the, the home of the hereafter, that is real life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends it by saying, Law kanu only if they knew. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it apparent for us what is correct. Um, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh, you know, Allahumma la aisha illa aishu aishu al akhirah, meaning, Oh Allah, there is no life except the life of the akhirah. Meaning everything is temporary. And what do we do? We tire ourselves for dunya. We hold and hold and collect and collect, thinking dunya is going to be forever. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, there will be an announcer in Jannah who will make this announcement. Verily, there is in store for you everlasting health and you will never fall ill. And you, and you will live forever and you will not die at all you will remain young and you'll never grow old and you will always live in affluent circumstances and you will never become destitute so you know what are we doing we're trying to seek all these pleasures which are meant for jannah in dunya and that is why you see that we are so unhappy uh, we are unhappy because we are seeking the real enjoyment which is going to be in jannah in dunya and and in doing so what we're doing we are totally <clears throat> neglecting our hereafter ayah number 65 and when they board a ship they supplicate Allah, to allah sincere to him in religion but when he delivers them to the land at once they associate others with him so you know when this is about the ship how many of you have traveled in the plane and you know when there was turbulence in the air you started making sincere dua um, type one type one if you if you really feel this ayah yes Honestly, we feel, and at that time, do you feel like watching any movies? You just turn it off. You don't want to do anything except, you know, you're just sitting, frozen, and making dua. Isn't it? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And imagine, what do we do after? We get off the plane. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows, allows us to land safely. And then we get back in the, uh, in the, in dunya, engrossed. Subhanallah. So they so that they will deny what we have granted them and they will enjoy themselves. But they are going to know. May Allah protect us. Have they not seen that we made Mecca a safe sanctuary while people are being taken away all around them? Meaning, you know, and even today we know Mecca is the most safest place. Then in falsehood do they believe and in favor of Allah they disbelieve. And, and who is more unjust than the one who invents a lie about Allah or denies the truth when it has come to him? Is there not hell? Is there not in hell a sufficient residence for the disbelievers? And now, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ending the surah with ayah number 69. And if you remember the first three ayahs, the first was Ahruf Muqatta'at, and the next was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you are going to be tested. If you are a mu'min, you're going to be tested. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is telling you that you know, you know, the promise of Allah is going to come true. What is it? Walladina jahadu wa fina, walladina jahadu fina, wa inna Allah la ma'al muhsineen. May Allah make us of them. Walladina jahadu and those who strive for us. Allah is telling us that you know, it was a test, you understood the test and you strove hard. Then Allah, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promising? That we will surely guide you to our ways. And indeed, Allah is with the doers of good. So you become a muhsin. The ones who the ones who strive and struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are, you know, they try to be in his obedience and they exert their maximum abilities. Yeah. And for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you a muhsin. 
And similarly, we, we also dry, uh, you know, can derive a conclusion that you know, the tests of this dunya are weak like a spider web, only if we have Iman. Yeah? Yeah. If we have Allah on our side, then this test is weak. Yeah? And when it's going to get difficult and when it's going to get complicated, we know the prom promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we trust in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will guide us. Yeah, for sure we're going to be tested, but we need to have hold, you know, console our heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for sure going to guide us. Alhamdulillah. And we've completed uh, Surah Al Ankabut. And now we're going to start uh, Surah Ar Rum. Ar Rum means the Romans, and it is a Makki Surah. And the theme of this Surah is, you know, um, you know, status of Allah's certainty, Allah's ayat and his certainty in the revelation uh, and certainty in the revelation. And the surah begins and ends about having certainty in the promises and the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, you know, the different topics that you will find is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 you know, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the verses about the Romans being defeated long before the, even it happened. Okay. Um, so let's begin. Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibati Rum. The Romans have been defeated. Now, at that time in Mecca, uh, you know, this is a Mecca Surah. So there were only two superpowers in the world. So they were the Romans and the Persians. Now, the Romans were Christians. So, you know, be being the people of the book, Muslims had sympathies with the Romans, whereas the Mushrikeen, they were sympathizers of the Persians. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, in, uh, the Romans will be, uh, uh, you know, the Romans have been defeated, defeated in the nearest land, but they, after their defeat, will overcome. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a glad tiding. What had happened is the Persians had invaded and defeated the Romans. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims in Ayat 2, you know, that they have been defeated, but... They will be, they will be, they will overcome. Fi bidi aysinin, bidi aysinin is any period under uh, 10 years, under 10. So it's going to be anywhere between three to nine years. And uh, you see, um, this surah was revealed before the Hijrah. It is a Makki surah. And when the Romans were defeated, Muslims were very sad because they considered the Romans to be closer in faith to the Muslims. So, you know, these verses were revealed that do not be sad. And, you know, these wins and losses are happen in life. And it is a matter of time where the circumstances will change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to Allah belongs the command before and after. And, and the day the believers will rejoice in the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, he gives victory to whom he wills and he is exalted in might, the merciful. It is, it is a promise of Allah. Allah does not fail in his promise and most of the people do not know. They know what is apparent of the worldly life, but they of the hereafter are unaware. Meaning, people speak about dunya, you know, you know, some people, you know, they speak so fluently about the dunya and you will look at them and you say, wow, you have so much knowledge. And they will speak about any aspect of life and everything, you know, you be it sports, be it politics, be it economics, and be it anything. And they are so eloquent about it. And, you, but when it comes to, about, uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they don't have any knowledge of the hereafter. Why? Because, you know, they are unaware of it, about, they are unaware of the, uh, uh, the main purpose of life because their focus is dunya. They do not comp contemplate within themselves. Allah has not created the heavens and the earth and what is between them except in truth and for a specified term. Indeed, and indeed, many of the people in matter of meeting with their Lord are disbelievers. So they, to they don't contemplate about their body, how, is the per how perfect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created about the creation, but about dunya matters, they are perfectly knowledgeable. Have they not traveled through the earth and observed how was the end of those before them? They were greater than them in power and they plowed the earth and built it up more than they have built it up. And their messengers came to them with clear evidences and Allah would not ever have wronged them, but they were wrongdoing themselves. They were, they were wronging themselves. 
the, then the end of those who did evil was the worst consequence because they denied the signs of Allah and they used to ridicule them. Allah begins the creation he, and then he will repeat it and then to him we will be returned. In ayah number 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning three facts of life. Allah begins the creation, he repeats it and then we all are going to be returned to him. And the day, the hour appears, the criminals will be in despair. Uh, and there will uh, there will not be for them among their uh, um, partners any intercessors, and they will then be disbelievers in their partners. So you see people, and we've studied this, that no one is going to intercede about anyone. So the people they used to rely on on that day, they are going to disassociate themselves with these people. And I have 14, and on the, and the day the hour appears, the, that day they will become separated, meaning nobody is going to be, except people on, uh, who love each other for Allah's sake, they will remain together. But other than that, all people are going to be separated. Uh, and as for those who have believed and done righteous deeds, they will be in gardens of paradise delighted. This is real success. You see, this is success. May Allah allow us to be of, of one of them. But as for those who believe, disbelieved and denied our verses and the meeting of the hereafter, those will be brought into punishment to remain. So, you know, so what, what should we do? What should we be in the state of? We should be in the state of Iman and we should try and do righteous deeds. And so exalted is Allah. For subhanallah, hina tumsuna wa hina tusbihun. And so exalted is Allah when you reach the evening and when you reach the morning. So what are we being told that, you know, an action point for us that we need to glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the evening. I hope you all have your morning and evening supplications and it's Ramadan time. No better time than to make it a practice for yourself. Do your morning and evening supplications. Write it down, please. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and to him is due all the praise throughout the heavens and the earth. Yeah. So we know everything is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And exalted is he at night and when you are at noon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, is glorified in different times. So what are we going to do? We're not going to restrict ourselves just to morning and evening. We are going to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, in, in in times when we are upset, in anxiety, in times when we are happy, in, in the daytime, in the noontime, anytime you remember, we're going to, uh, you know, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is deserving of praise at all times. Ayah 19, he brings the living out of the dead and dead um, uh, and brings the dead out of the living and brings to life the earth after it's lifeless. And, you know, so how can we despair a lot from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah is so powerful? And thus you will be brought out. So this is the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of his signs is that he created you from dust. Then suddenly you were human beings dispersing throughout the earth. So we are all from, uh, you know, from Adam and Hawa, alayhim salam And, you know, everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything for the human beings. And, and of his signs is that he created from you for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy indeed in that other signs of people who give thought so now we are being told the purpose of marriage the, uh, you know what is marriage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in ayah number 21 um, that I mean ayatihi no sorry it is from um Underline. That's the purpose of marriage. So two things, mawadda, affection and mercy. Now I would like you to reflect on how is your marriage? Yeah. How is, is it coming onto these two criteria? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, indeed, in that are signs for people who give thought. So, you know, what is mawadda? Mawadda is wanting good for the other person. And this is, you know, normally from the husband, expected of the husband, wanting good of the other person. And mawadda is higher level than love. And rahma is caring nature. So you see, all these two together only will make successful marriage. Yeah, so caring nature, and this is expected of the wife. 
okay? We have lack of time, inshallah, some other time, but I want you to think about it, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and of his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the diversity of your languages and your colors. Indeed, in that are the signs of, for those of knowledge. So I'd like to ask you, what is your uh, language and where do you come from? Let me ask you, where, what is your language and what is, where do you come from? The language that, okay, Urdu, this is it. India, okay. English, Danish from Denmark, okay. London, Urdu, okay. Sindhi, mm -hmm. Urdu from Hyderabad, Arabic, Lebanon, Spanish from Spain, okay. Alhamdulillah, Maldives, English. Creole from Mauritius, okay. Yoruba, okay. Alhamdulillah, Bengali, Bangla. Women from South Africa. You see, subhanAllah, languages. You see, you, you know, I wish I could share because I don't want to disturb your, your chats. No? Pashto in Australia, okay. MashaAllah. Jazakullah khairan. You see, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created diversity in languages. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say one is superior to the other? No. This is signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created so many languages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see his sister is writing in Nigeria, we have 4,000 languages. Allahu Akbar. Ya Allah. And yet, look, Allah, subhanAllah, jazakumullah khair and sisters. And you know, see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to all the languages. Yeah. And, and, and answers their du'as and fulfills their needs yeah is is that not a sign so it is just a sign from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and sisters you need you know for all those languages that are not so common um uh, you know you need to um, use that language to convey the message of islam okay so each of you whatever you've learned in your language where, you know, like some languages, even I didn't know what, what they were. So, uh, you know, you need to make a leaflet and whatever you've learned, invite people. Okay, because your language is a sign. And, it, and I-23, and of his signs is your sleep by night and day and seeking his bounty. Indeed, that are the signs for people who listen. So, subhanAllah. And from his and of his signs is that he shows you the light, the lightning, meaning the lightning, the thunder and the lightning, fear and hope, and he sends down the rain from the sky by which he brings to life the earth after its lifelessness. Indeed, in that are the signs for the people who reason. And of his signs, any of his signs is that the heavens and the earth remain in his command. We've learned about it. I'm not going to spend much time. You all know how the earth and the, and the heavens are subdued to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he calls you with a single call from earth. Immediately you will come forth. Meaning on the day of judgment, when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call, everyone will follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to him belongs whosoever is in the heavens and the earth, and all are devoutly obedient. Everything in the heavens and the earth are devoutly obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two um, dis dis disobedient ones are the humans and the jinn, because they've been given a free will. I-27, and it is he who begins creation and he repeats it, and that is easier for him. To him belongs the highest attribute in the heavens and the earth, and he is exalted in mind, the wise. He presents to you an example from yourselves. Do you have among those whom your right hand possess any partners in that we have provided for you so that you are equal therein? And would you fear them as you, your fear of one another within a partnership? Meaning... And those who are your slaves, meaning people who are, you know, much less privileged than yourself. Would you consider them as your equal? Would you? No, you wouldn't. Yeah. Would you fear them as you fear those who are similar to you in status? No, you wouldn't. This is what Allah SWT is saying. So Allah SWT says, thus we detail the verses for people for you, uh, who use reason. So what are we going to do? We're going to reflect. We're going to reflect on the ayahs, of Allah, on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who, who wrong follow their own, um, their own desires without knowledge, then who can guide one whom Allah has sent astray? And for, and for them, there are no helpers. So, uh, you know, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, anyone, all of us, yeah, anyone who's listening to the Quran, who's reciting the Quran, direct your face towards the religion. And uh, incline, uh, direct your face to the religion, inclines to the truth, and adhere to the fitrah of Allah upon which He has created all people. You know, I've told you about fitrah, right? That 
all of us have got the natural inclination that all of us are born knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, the natural religion of this earth is Tawheed. There is the every single thing is in submission. Like I said, you know, it, you know, when your device sings, all the apps sync itself, right? And we should be synced with the with everything in the universe. Everything in the universe is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we come out of that, we are the odd one out, and it is going to you know mess us up, not anyone else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to adhere to the fitrah, which is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. And we know the hadith of the Prophet that every single person is born in fitrah. And, and then their that baby's father, change, that father and mother, they change them and make them into whatever religion they are. So no change should be there in the creation of Allah. That is the correct religion. But most of the people do not know adhere to it, turning in repentance to him and fear him and establish prayer and do not be of those who associate others with Allah. So, and who are these people who turn in repentance, fear him and establish prayer? prayer? And so, and this is an action point for us that we need to constantly make sure that we are doing, uh, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never be of the thought that, yes, I've done everything right and it, there's no way. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe we gave someone a dirty look. Maybe we frowned upon someone's outfit. Maybe we laughed that she's wearing the same outfit to all the gatherings. And that is, you know, arrogance. Little did we know. And all those who have divided their religion and become sects, meaning they've become fractions, they've become groups, every fraction rejo rejoicing in what it has, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down one religion. Yeah, what was it? To surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surrender to the creator. Yeah, and what are people doing? People are taking, you know, gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even within Muslims, there are going to be fractions now. So what is the lesson for us that we are going to be, you know, we're going to be united under the banner of Islam, be Muslim and not divide. Do not call us, you know, we're not going to call ourselves names. And when, and when adversity touches the people, they call upon their Lord, turning in repentance to him. Then when he lets them taste mercy from him, at once a party of them associate others with Allah. So, you know, something that again, that is repeated, that, you know, good times, they, you know, when, when it's bad times, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, bad time, uh, and, and once the bad time passes, good time comes, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give credit to someone else. So that they will, they will deny what we have granted them. Then enjoy yourselves for you are going to know. Or we have sent down to them an authority and it speaks of what they are associating with them. And when they and we and when we let the people taste the mercy, they rejoice therein. But if evil afflicts them for what their hands have put forth, immediately they, they despair. Do they not see that Allah extends provision for whom He wills and He restricts it? Indeed, in that are the signs for people who believe. So what do we learn? It is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who distributes the wealth. So you know we should not fear anyone in regards to the wealth, and we should not be you know. Uh, compromise our religion because thinking that this person can be of benefit clearly Allah is the whole possessor of all the benefit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who extends provision and withholds it with from whomever he wants and now we're going to be told an amazing formula listen to this so give the relative his right so number one give the relative his right as well as the needy and the traveler that is best for those who desire the countenance of allah and and it is they who will be successful so if you and i want to see the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we want to be successful what are we going to do we are going to give the the relatives their right it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Who said Jannah is going to be easy? Yeah. So we are going to give the relatives the right and and um, and then we are going to help the needy and we're going to help the traveler. Okay. Then may Allah make us of the successful people. Amen. And whatever you give um, for interest uh, to increase within the wealth of people will not increase with Allah. So now we were told in Surah Baqarah about interest and now we're told again. That, you know, if you think, uh, you know, riba is going to increase you, it is not going to increase you. But if, if you give in zakah, 
desiring the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the multipliers. So do not, you know, be happy when you're giving zakah. Don't be sad. Oh my God, I have to give zakah. No, be happy. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when you give zakah, Allah will increase you. It will multiply you in your wealth. Yeah. Allah wants a society that strives to give zakah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like a society that deals in interest. Okay, may Allah protect us from the evils of the interest. Um, I number 40. And Allah is the one who created you, then provided for you, then will cause you to die, and then will give you life. Are there uh, are there any for you uh, of your partners who does anything of that? Exalted is he and high above what they associate with him. Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea. Why has the corruption appeared? But what the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling himself, what the hands of people have earned so that he may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done, that perhaps they will return. So you see that, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times does not, you know, uh, protect us from the harm. Why? Because we have done certain actions that, you know, we have to suffer the consequence of. And why? This is also from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, suddenly you hold back and you say, why are these things happening to me? And then you realize, then you become humble and you realize that, you know, I've done something wrong. So, uh, the, the you know, trials in our life are sent so that we can reform our actions. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us you know, to be punished in the hereafter. So hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends some small trials our, our way, sometimes trials in our health, sometimes trials in our wealth, sometimes trials with people, so that, you know, we can reform ourselves and not that we become people who destroy ourselves completely. I number 42, say travel through the land and observe how he uh, how was the end of those before. Most of them were associators, meaning the ones who were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were people of shirk. So direct your face towards the correct religion before a day comes from Allah, of which there is no repelling that day. They will be divided. Whoever disbelieves upon him is the consequence of his disbelief. And whoever does righteous righteousness, they are for themselves preparing. So underline this, please. That, you know, anyone who's doing wrong in terms of the ibadah and not giving the right of Allah, they are going to face the consequence of that. And, you know, whatever good we do, we are doing it for ourselves. Okay, and when we are doing good, we are preparing our home of the hereafter. I number 45, that he may reward those who have believed in righteous and done righteous deeds out of his bounty. Indeed, he does not like disbelievers. And of his signs is that he sends the winds as, as the bringers of good tidings and, le and to let you taste his mercy. And so the ships may sail at his command. And so you may seek of his bounty and perhaps you will be grateful. So you see, how many times have you felt the, the wind blowing and you said, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rab. How many times? And last time they're saying that, you know, what does the, ring, the, the wind do? You know, it brings us good tidings. Why? Because it allows the travel to happen. You know, imagine if there was no wind, how would the ship sail? Yeah, I understand that, yes, the, there's motorized ships, but, you know, it helps. Yeah. And, and the food. So that, and all this, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I've done all this, why? So that you become grateful. And we have already sent messengers before you to their people and they came to them and they came to them with clear evidences. Then we took retribution from them, from those who committed crimes and incumbent upon us was the support of the believers. So what is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That if we want Allah's help, what should we do? We need to fix our iman. Yeah, we need to revive. If our iman has got, you know, some low, then we need to revive our iman. Only then the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come. It is Allah who sends the winds and they steer the clouds and spread them in the sky uh, however he wills and he makes them fragments. So you see the rain emerge from within them and when he causes it to fall upon whom he wills of his servants, Im immediately they rejoice. You see, again, time and time again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning his blessings. Yeah, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scatters the clouds. And, you know, you just have to appreciate the shapes of the clouds, how they take their shape, how they move. 
And, you know, and especially in countries where it does not rain often, and especially, you know, may Allah make it easy for people who are suffering from famine. You know, when they see rain, are they not happy? They become so happy and they say, Alhamdulillah for the rain. And although although they were before it, it they, they were before it was sent down upon them in, in despair, meaning they were really, really giving up hope. Um, so uh, do we give up hope easily? Because Allah's Prophet says Allah's mercy is just around the corner. So a lesson for us that we are not going to lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, you and I, something important. So observe the effects of the mercy of Allah. What is the mercy? The falling of the rain. How did the rain come? And how is it, you know, what are the benefits? You know, no matter how much you use your garden hose to clean your garden and water your garden. And, you know, when the rain comes and it falls on your plants, the way they bloom and the way they look fresher is not, you know, is something completely different. Yeah. So all this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, how he gives life to the earth after its lifelessness. Indeed, that same one will give life to the dead and he is over all things competent. So what is the lesson we learn here? You know, no matter how you feel in your, you know, how you're feeling, you're feeling sad. You are feeling that there's no color in your life. There's so much pain in your life. Yeah, you seem that there's no relief coming. And, you know, with the situation around for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, may Allah make it easy for them. You know, what, you know, what are we going to, are we going to give up hope? No, we learn from all these signs. Look at these same signs that are happening, the changes that are happening. What are we going to do? We're never going to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will send the rain. Allah will send the rain of relief. And he will change the situation. He will change your and my situation. And he will change the situation of the people of Palestine, inshallah. Definitely, we hope and we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we, should, if we should send a bad wind and they saw their crops turn yellow, meaning a storm came, they would remain there after disbelievers. Yeah, meaning, you know, these people who are so, they are despair, they have despaired in the... Uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it, it just grows and so indeed you will not make the dead hear and nor will you make the dead dead hear the call when they turn their backs retreating so the, nor will you make the deaf hear I beg your pardon yeah and when they hear when they turn their backs retreating so underlying here again we are being told dead don't hear so I don't know you know someone was asking me so um, sister why do the men go to the graveyard now, we are being told to go to the graveyard so that we can remember that our turn is, can be any time. You know, when you go to the graveyard, it is for our remembrance and nothing else. You can stay at home and make dua as well for, your, for the relatives that have passed away. You don't have to go. You can be millions of miles away and still make dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit them. Going to the graveyard is just so that we take lesson and pay heed. Ayah number 53, and you cannot guide the blind away from their error. <clears throat> you will only make uh, you will you will only make here those who believe in our verses so they are Muslims in submission to Allah. Allah is the one who created you from weakness. So remember when you were a baby and then made after weakness strength and you became a young person. Yeah, and then made after strength weakness and white hair. So then you know old age catches up. He creates what he wills and he is knowing the competent. Uh, he is the knowing and the competent. And the day, the hour appears, the criminals will swear they had remained but an hour. And thus they were deluded. So we've, we've covered this topic as well. But those who are given knowledge and faith will say you remain the extent of Allah's decree until the day of resurrection. And this is the day of resurrection, but you did, but you did not used to know. So that day, their excuse will not benefit. They will not benefit those who wronged, nor will they be asked to appease Allah. And we have certainly presented to the people in this Quran from, from every kind of example. But if you should bring them a sign, the disbelievers surely will say, you are but falsifiers. And the believers are going to, the, you know, the disbelievers are going to say, you are liars. And, and, you know, indeed, now, honestly, don't you think how many signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling time and time again, the repetition of signs. You know, may Allah open our hearts. 
But why are they going to say liars? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, does, that, the, does, does Allah seal the hearts of those who do not know? Why are they not believing? Because their hearts are sealed. So what is Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being told? So be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. And let not... Okay. Sorry. And let not and let them not disquiet you from uh, let them not disquiet you who, who are not certain in faith. Meaning they shouldn't make and now that was for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and now it's for all of us that you know we have to be patient. At the time Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was being told that you know be patient. Verily the promise of Allah is true and let not those who have no certainty in faith discourage you from conveying the message of Allah. So now for us, that when we have to, uh, you know, spread the message, act on the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't lose your confidence. And don't be, don't, com don't be compromising on your religion. Okay? Be patient and endure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help is going to come. Now, alhamdulillah, we're going to begin Surah Luqman. For those of you who have not attended my tafsir of Surah Luqman, make sure that you go on Ulum Academy and catch up in your own time because justice cannot be done um, with Surah Luqman in in few minutes, I should say. But if you're really interested and in it is, you will thoroughly enjoy the tafsir of Surah Luqman. Um, I recommend that you do it whenever you have time. The theme of this surah is nurturing the children um, and importance of um, the that we nurture Tawheed in the children. And again, this surah is a Makki surah. And this surah begins and ends about the characteristics of those who are successful on the Day of Judgment. And um, indeed, wisdom is that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we work for, the, for the, the last day. That is true wisdom. And Luqman was not a prophet, but a wise man. Okay. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam mim. Tilka ayatul kitab al-hakim. Hudan wa rahmatan lil muhsineen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, starts with the separated letters. These are the verses of a book. Now, which book is it? A Quran. And this book is full of wisdom. And what is it? It is a guide. It is as a guidance and a mercy for the muhsineen, the doers of good. And who are the doers of good? Those who establish prayer and give zakah and they of the year after are certain in faith. Do you have these characteristics? Then, you know, good news to you that you are a muhsin. Those are, or, and those are on right guidance from their Lord and, in, and it is those who are successful. May Allah make us of them. And next, and uh, I number six, and of the people who is he who buys amusement uh, of speech. Um, to mislead others from the way of Allah without any knowledge and who takes it in ridicule. They, those will have a humiliating punishment. There's a word in the ayahs wa min al nasi man yashtari lahwal hadith. Underlying lahwal hadith. Lahwal hadith is any, anything a person finds amusing, entertaining, and anything um, you know that is said to refute the truth is lahwal hadith. Ibn Abbas anhu, and Ibn Masud anhu, these are the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they said it is singing. Mujahid, the commentator of the Quran, he said it is playing drums. Hassan al-Basri, he said it is singing and instruments. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he said it is sufficient for me that the Sahaba and the Tabi'een have said that it is idle, this idle talk is singing. So it is unanimously mentioned here. This is mu music and singing and the musical instruments in coming to level hadith. And also idle talk, anything that we are finding entertaining, which takes us, you know, uh, from away from the truth. So uh, an action point for all of us. You're going to reflect on what kind of idle talk is in your life. And you are going to make it a, a firm, res firm resolve that you're going to take it out of your life. Okay. Anything that distracts you from knowledge. Okay. So you, you're going to, you know, and I cannot do justice. Honestly, you, you have to listen to the tafsir and then you will know. Okay. I'm just giving you a brief idea here. And when our verses are recited to him, he turns away arrogantly as if he has not heard them. Meaning the person who enjoys listening to the music, he finds Quran, you know, burdensome. They don't want to listen to the Quran. Why? And what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is as if 
there was in his ears deafness, give him tidings of painful punishment. And indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds, that for them are gardens of pleasure. Meaning, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in ayah 8 that you give up, you like music, but you give up listening to music for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you will get something far more better in Jannah. Far more better. So you will have whatever you, you please, whatever you desire, you're going to get that. And understand that, you know, music is something that is of the shaitan. And music and Quran cannot remain in one heart. That is why, you know, there is there must be a reason, isn't it, why music is, we, we've been told to stay away from music. May Allah protect us. Wherein they abide by abide eternally. It is the promise of Allah, which is truth, and he is exalted in might and the wise. He created the heavens without pillars that you see and has cast into earth firmly set mountains, lest it should shift with you and disperse therein from every creature. And we send down from uh, down rain from the sky and made grow therein plants of every noble kind. This is the creation of Allah. And so show me that uh, uh, those other than him have created. Rather, the wrongdoers are in clear error. So again, these ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah are being told. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Luqman. He was a black slave. Uh, and then um, he was, you know, he was very, very uh, uh, wise. So much so that because of his wisdom, the king would take uh, advice from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we certainly gave, we, we had certainly given Luqman wisdom and, and said, be grateful to Allah. So, you know, what is gratitude first? Okay, let me just tell you what is wisdom. Wisdom is, you know, when a person is able to make the right decision at the right time. And that can only happen because the person has knowledge. Yeah, then the, the wisdom is the ability to, to, to transform your knowledge into action. Okay, so um, what is gratitude? Because we're being told we have to be grateful. And, you know, are we grateful? Are you writing down blessings that you have? And, you know, gratitude doesn't mean that you have, you, you need to have lots of wealth to be grateful. I read a quote somewhere and it said, Sometimes you're sometimes you're unsatisfied with your life while you while many people in the world are dreaming for living your life. A child on a farm sees a plane fly overhead and dreams of flying, but a pilot on the plane sees the farmhouses and dreams of returning home. That is life. Enjoy yours. Meaning, take you know. They, of course, this is from a non-Muslim. Hence, they are saying enjoy yours. I mean, we are going to live life in in obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And then he says, if the wealth is the secret to happiness, then the rich would be dancing on the streets. But it's only poor kids who do that. If power ensures security, then the officials should walk unguarded. Though, but those who live simply sleep soundly. If beauty and fame bring ideal relationships, then celebrities should have the best marriages. They don't, do they? Live simply walk humbly and love genuinely. So this is, you know, what is gratitude? You don't have to have all these things for being grateful, okay? And and, and the key is that we need to be humble towards, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, being grateful is a quality. Um, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam, he said, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever has four things has been given the best in this world and in the hereafter. Number one, a grateful heart. So you see, this is a quality that is given. So, you know, may Allah allow us to be of the people who are grateful. The tongue of, rem a tongue of remembrance, a body that can withstand with trials and a wife not seeing betrayal in herself or his wealth. These are, if this, if anybody has been given these four things, has been given the best of this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be grateful and 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 some and people who are you know who have the 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 capacity to withstand trials and the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be uh, you know the wives who are you know who are protective of their modesty and who protect the wealth of their husbands I mean and whoever is grateful uh, is grateful for the benefit of himself. And whoever denies his favor, then indeed Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. 
And there's a dua here. Uh, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us the dua. Allahumma um, a'ayni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. So, you know, make this dua after your salah as well. Um, and now, after, from ayah 13, we're going to be learning some parenting tips. And mention when Luqman said to his son while he was instructing him, Oh, my son, do not associate anything with Allah. Indeed, shirk is the greatest injustice. So the first lesson that we need to teach our children is to for them to not make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that's the first thing. Because he, you know, he is saying that shirk is zulm al-azim. Meaning, zulm, meaning that, you know, it, what is the meaning of zulm is, not, is to not give someone what they deserve. So when someone does shirk is, you know, you did not give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right that he deserves to be worshipped. Okay. And we know that anyone who does uh, who dies on shirk is going to enter in the fire for eternity. And we have enjoined upon man to care for his parents. His mother carried him, increasing her in weakness upon weakness, and his and his weaning is two years. So you see how uh, how wise this person is, Luqman. That you know he's saying that enjoy, you know be good to your parents, but also he said you know said care for your mother more. And look how Allah subhanahu wa taala is mentioning. You know, people don't care when women get pregnant, you know, they say, oh, so what, you know, carry on with your daily affairs. You may be tired. There are days you don't want to get up of your bed. You just want to sit down. You don't want to get up and do things. And But people expect you to do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, you know, when the, when the lady is carrying, she, she is feeling weakness upon weakness. You know, I fell in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I read this first time, I said, subhanallah, how caring is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for women? And you know how, uh, and, and Luqman is mentioning that care for your mother. Why? Because she bore you weakness upon weakness. And then we are being told the weaning is two years. And, uh, and be grateful to me and to your parents. And to me is the final des destination. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that, you know, first we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then to our parents. So, you know, again, the mention of being good to our parents. And we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they endeavor to make you associate with me that of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them, but accompany them in this world with appropriate kindness and follow the way of those who turn back to me in repentance. Then to me it will be your return and I will inform you about what they used to do. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to respect the parents, to love them, to care for them. But one thing we're not going to compromise is that we are not going to compromise. If they ask us to do shirk, we are not going to, we're going to stop there. Why? Because we've learned the rule. There's no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the creator. Okay, and Luqman, I 16, and Luqman said, um, oh, my son, indeed, if wrong should be way, it should be the weight of a mustard seed and should be within a rock or anywhere in the heavens and the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Indeed, Allah is subtle and acquainted. Subhanallah. This is how he's teaching his son that, you know, you do some tiniest of the thing, size of the mustard seed then Allah will know about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Allah knows and he's teaching his child to be humble. And then he says, oh, my son, establish prayer, enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and be patient over what befalls you. Indeed, all, uh, all that is of matters requiring determination, meaning that, you know, we need to, when you are going to enjoin good and forbid evil, people are not going to be happy with you. So he's teaching his son that you're going to be patient over it. You know, control yourself. Don't complain. So, and, and also for us now that we need to trust in Allah, we need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to try our best. And then, and do not turn your cheek in contempt towards people and do not walk through the earth exultantly, meaning arrogantly. Indeed, Allah does not like every everyone self-deluded and boastful. So what are we being told here? That, you know, when people are talking to you, don't turn your back towards them. Don't ignore them. Do not, do not look down on people thinking you are better off than them. Don't show arrogance in the way you walk to, pe to people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah has revealed to me that you must be humble so no one oppresses another and boasts over another. 
So this is Nabi Sallallahu being told. So what we should do, we need to we need to check ourselves. How do we walk? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, um, ayah number eighteen, that uh, Inna Allah la yuhibu kulla muqtalin fakhur. Two words, muqtal and fakhur. May Allah not make us of them. What is muqtal? Who is the 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 victim of self admiration? This person thinks highly of himself. So we'll ask a question: Do we admire ourselves? Do you admire yourself that you're learning the Deen? Yeah. Do we do we admire ourselves? No. Uh, we need to be humble. We need to say, Ya Rab, it is from the mercy of, of yourself that I am seated here and learning. Do you think that you're always right? Because no one is always right. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. So that's muhtal. May Allah protect us from being muhtal. And fakhur, yeah, you know, it's someone who makes their presence known by boasting, you know, showing off, bragging about themselves that they have this and this, they have this many cars, they have their children are so good. May Allah protect us. And then he goes on to say, uh, and be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Indeed, the most dis dis disagreeable of sounds is the voice of the donkey. So what are we going to do? That we are going to check the tone of our voice. How is the tone of our voice? Uh, is it arrogant? Yeah. And you know what? Then we need to think that, you know, if am I loud? Because if I'm loud, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, the most disagreeable sound is that of a donkey. So, you know, may Allah protect us. We don't want to be compared to a donkey, do we? Um, do you not see that Allah has made subject to you whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth? Meaning everything is for the benefit of the human beings and amply bestowed upon you his favors, both apparent and unapparent. But if the people is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge or guidance or an enlightening book from him. And when it is said to him, follow what Allah has revealed, they say rather, we will follow upon that upon which we found our forefathers, even if shaitan was inviting them to the blaze and uh, to the punishment of the blaze. Allah is questioning, even, even then, will you do it? And whoever submits his face to Allah. So, you know, what is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that, Ya Rab, I'm going to obey you in whatever you've asked me while he's a doer of good. Yeah. Meaning you submit to Allah and he says, Ya Rab, I, I love you and I honor you and, and, and I'm going to do in, in the best capacity of mine. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold, meaning Allah will strengthen him and Allah will give him the ability to be firm and strong and to Allah will be the outcome of all matters. And whoever has believed, let not this disbelief grieve you. Uh, so it, to us is their return and we will inform them of what they did. Indeed, Allah is knowing of what is within the chests. Meaning, you know, uh, you know, no one knows what is what I'm thinking, what you're thinking. No one, even the person sitting next to me would not know what I'm thinking. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the secrets that are hidden deep in the heart. We grant them enjoyment for a little, uh, for a little, then we will force them into massive punishment. And if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will surely say Allah. So then Allah, in, in, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being asked to say, Qul Alhamdulillah, say all the praises due to Allah, but most of them do not understand. And um, so why? Because they are not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Indeed, Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. And it is, uh, and and if it whatever upon the trees uh, and whatever trees upon earth were pens and the sea was ink replenished thereafter by seven more seas, the words of Allah would not be exhausted. Meaning the words of Allah, the praise of Allah will not end even if all the trees, imagine that all the trees in the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be, this Allah says will become pen. And all the seas that we know, the oceans and everything, you know, use them as ink. And then thereafter, seven more seas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says his words will not end. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. You know, we don't, we, we really don't value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be valued. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Your creation your, and your resurrection will not be will not be but as a single, that of a single soul. Indeed, Allah is hearing and seeing. And do you not see that Allah causes the night to enter the day and causes the day to enter in the night and has subjected the sun and the moon and reach each running its course for a specified term and that Allah with whatever you do is acquainted. 
meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about each one of us and our actions. That is because Allah is the truth and that they will call upon other than him is falsehood and because Allah is the most high, the grand. Do you not do you not see that ship sail through the sea by the favor of Allah and that he may show you of his signs? Indeed, in that are signs for everyone who is patient and grateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word here, sabbar, and Shakur, may Allah make us of those who are very patient. And Shakur is, you know, superlative degree, the ones who are grateful. Meaning only the ones who are very patient and grateful can see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the waves uh, come over them, like can canopies, they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, sincere to him in religion. But when he delivers them to the land, there are some of them who are moderate in faith, meaning... You know, some of them, uh, you know, most of them, they go back on to how they were. Uh, and none rejects our signs except every everyone treacherous and, and ungrateful. So there's another two qualities that we don't want um, to um, develop, which is khatar and kafur. May Allah protect us from being that. So um, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, oh, people. Fear your Lord and fear a day when no father will avail his son, nor will a son avail his father at all. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. So let not the worldly life delude you and not the deceived um, uh, and, and, not, and be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver. Who is the deceiver? Shaitan is the deceiver. Yeah, so the, the, this is the reality of this life that the world is green. It is luscious. It is beautiful. But in reality, what is it? Deceptive. Yeah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see the deceptions. The Prophet wasalam, said in a hadith, the son of the food of son of Adam is an example of this world. No matter how flavorful you prepare it, see what is the out what the outcome is. Subhanallah. What is the outcome of that food, no matter how much it is? That is all for us to know. I 34, indeed Allah alone has the knowledge of the hour and sends down the rain and knows what is in the wombs and no soul perceives what it will earn tomorrow and no soul perceives what it, what in what land it will die. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing and acquainted. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. We need to remember our end and we should not be deceived by this worldly life. Alhamdulillah, we're going to start Surah As-Sajda. As-Sajda means the prostration. It is a Makki Surah again. Uh, Makki Surahs, you know, they wake us up and, you know, tell us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The emphasis is on Tawheed. And the theme of this Surah is humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Surah begins and ends about the creation and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And, when, and the thing is that when we reflect on these signs, you know, there is, it is impossible that we don't um, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite this surah every night. Let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. Tanzil al Kitab. Kitab ila Raiba fi Mir Rabbil Alameen. This is a revelation of the book about which there is no doubt from the Lord of the Worlds. Meaning the Quran is not magic. It is not a fabrication. It is not stories. It is a true book from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. True revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Or they say, uh, or do they say he invented it? Rather, it is the truth from your Lord that you may warn a people to whom no warner has come um, um, before you. So perhaps they will be guided. It is Allah who created the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them in six days. And then he established himself above the throne. You have not besides him any protector or any intercessor. So will you be? Will you not be reminded? This is a question being asked from, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you and I now. He arranges each matter from the heaven to the earth, and then it will ascend to him in a day, the extent of which is a thousand of a thousand years of which you count. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the, the heavens and the earth in six days, and then Allah regulates all the affairs, plans all the affairs, and then all deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is done, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, knows about it. And then um, the, that is the knower of the unseen and the witness, exalted in might, the merciful, who perfected everything which he created and he began the creation of man from clay. Then he made his austerity out of the extract of liquid disdained. 
in meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and saying the liquid that you are, you are made from is not even worth talking about it. Then he proportioned uh, him and breathed into him from his created soul and made for you hearing and vision and hearts. Little are you grateful. So human being, you started from a liquid that was, you know, so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even name it, is the semen, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportioned us gave us the senses and they say um, we are lost within earth and we will indeed be recreated in the new creation they're questioning so rather they are in the matter of meeting of their lord disbelievers say that uh, the angel of death will take you uh, who has been entrusted with you then to your lord will you be returned meaning the angel of death has been given the task of taking our soul if you could see when the criminals are hanging their heads before their lords before their lord in, in you know Nabi Sallam is being told about what is going to happen in the future. So these people who disbelieved are going to be in utter embarrassment and they're going to be saying, our Lord, we have we have seen and heard, so return us to the world. We will work righteousness. Uh, indeed, we are now certain. But, you know, the thing is, weren't they given the proofs before? So, um, and if Allah had willed, we could have he, we could have given every soul its guidance, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to force guidance on anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given us a free will. But the word, uh, what the word from me will come into effect that I will surely fill, uh, the, fill hell with jinn and people together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us from being one of them. Ameen. So taste punishment because you forgot the meeting of this uh, of this your day. Indeed, we have ac uh, accordingly forgotten you. So may Allah protect us. And taste the punishment of eternity for what you used to do. Only those who believe in our verses who they when when they are reminded by them fall down in prostration and they exalt Allah with praise uh, of their Lord and they are not uh, uh, and they are not arrogant. So you know, may Allah subhanahu wa taala. Make us of those people who do often such them, and we uh, are not arrogant. They arise from their beds, they supplicate their Lord in fear and aspiration, and from what we have provided them, they spend. So these are the people who get up for night prayer. Underline this. They spend, these are the people who spend their nights praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They leave their warm beds and they get up and, and, and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no soul knows what has what has hidden for, for them of the comfort, comfort of the eyes as a reward of what they used to do. Meaning no one knows about the Jannah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah says, I have prepared for my pious servants which no eye has ever seen, no ears has ever heard and no human heart has ever perceived. But it is testified by the book of Allah. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this ayah. And in another hadith, Prophet Sallallahu said, Musa was Musa السلام, once asked Allah, Oh Allah, who amongst the people of Jannah is lowest in rank? Allah said, the person who will be admitted into Jannah, last of all among those deserving paradise, it will be said to him, enter Jannah. The, the person will say, Oh my Lord, how should I enter while the people have settled in their homes and taken their shares? Uh, so the person, uh, it it would be said to them, would you be pleased if if there is for you the like the kingdom of a king amongst the king of your kings of your world? The person will say, I am pleased, my lord. So Allah, so uh, so Allah will say, for you is that and like that and like that and that. Meaning five times Allah subhanahu wa taala will repeat, and the person will say, I am pleased, my lord. Allah will say, it is for you ten times like it and for you. Is that what your soul desires and your eye enjoys? And the servant will say, Radi to Rabbi, and say, My Lord, I'm happy. So, this is a long hadith, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who have got the highest of Jannah. We ask Allah for Jannah to fill those. I mean, the ayah 18, and then it is, then is the one who was the believer like the one who is defiantly disobedient. They are not equal. As for those who have Oh, then, oh, as for those who have believed, who believed and did righteous deeds, for them there will be gardens of refuge as accommodation for what they used to do. May Allah make us of them. But as for those who defiantly uh, disobeyed, their refuge is a fire. Every time they wish to, they wish to emerge from it, they will be returned to it. While it is said to them, taste the punishment of the fire which you used to deny. And we will, and we will surely let them taste the nearer punishment, short of greater punishment, that perhaps they will re repent. Meaning, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala puts us in difficulty, so we realize, you know, where we've done wrong, 
and you know we admit our mistake and we repent so that we are saved from greater punishment. So now we all know if there are some problems coming in our life, what are we going to do? So and last part is being merciful to us. Okay, and who is more unjust than the one who is reminded of the vessels of his Lord, then he turns away from them. Indeed, we from the criminals will take retribution. And we certainly gave Musa the scripture. So um, do not be in doubt over his meeting. And we made Torah the guidance for the children of Israel. And we made and we made for them among leaders guiding by our command. And when they were um, by guiding by our command, when they were patient and when they were certain of our signs. So we hear, we get to know the sign of a good leader is that they are patient. Indeed, I number 25, indeed, your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that over which they used to differ. Has it not become clear to them how many generations we destroyed before them? They walk among their dwellings. Indeed, in that are the signs. Did they not hear? Then do they not hear? So you see the Arab people, all the people that we talk about, Ad, Ad and Samud, um, you know, oh, they, they used to go through and they used to see them on their travels. So Allah is saying, do you, do you not hear? Do you not take heed? Have you not, have they not seen that we drive the water in the clouds to barren land and bring forth thereby crops for which their livestock eat and they themselves, then do they not see? And they say, when will, when, when will this quest, uh, when will be this quest? And if you should be truthful, meaning, uh, when are you going to be victorious, O Muslim? Meaning the Mushrikeen of Mecca, they used to make fun of the Muslims. Uh, say on the day of co uh, conquest, the belief of those who have disbelieved will not benefit them, nor will they be reprieved. Meaning when the judgment comes and the hour comes, then, you know, um, Iman is not going to help you then. If you become Muslims at that time, it's not going to help you. So Allah subhanahu wa says, so turn away from them and wait. Indeed, they are waiting. Alhamdulillah, we're going to start Surah Al-Ahzab. Surah Al-Ahzab is the plural of Hizb, which, which means the co coalition, people have translated it as and the combined forces. It is a Madani Surah. So after all those Surahs of Makki Surahs, now our Iman is high up. Alhamdulillah, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his signs. We fear the day of judgment. We're going to rectify our affairs. Now there are going to be some rules and regulations for us. And for this, I suggest to you, my dears, we don't have enough time. I suggest that you um, read about uh, the Battle of Trench, okay? Because we can't, I can't do justice to it at all. So read about the Battle of Trench because this involves uh, the, the talking about the Battle of Trench. So what is the theme of the surah? The theme of the surah is surrendering to Allah's commands and legislations. And the surah, sorry. And the surah begins and uh, ends with the uh, with the command of having taqwa. You know, we need to have taqwa in ourselves. Yeah, and, you know, that should be our main goal. Okay, let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal nabi, ittaqillah. ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين إن الله كان عليما حكيما نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is being told O oh Prophet fear Allah and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites indeed Allah is ever knowing and wise meaning don't obey them why, why in terms of you know giving in to their religion don't compromise with them your deen and follow that which is revealed to you from your lord indeed allah is ever with what you do acquainted and rely upon allah and sufficient is allah as a disposer of affairs allah has not made for a man two hearts in his interior meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not you know a person cannot have conflicting beliefs yeah, meaning a, a person cannot have, you know, iman. Uh, it can be either iman or it can be either disbelief. You know, a person can either be shy or they can be, uh, you know, immodest. Either they can have a clean heart, you know, like a sound heart, we said, or they can have a heart which is full of jealousy and animosity. They, the two opposite, they are two opposites cannot remain in one place. And he has not made your wives whom you declare unlawful, uh, unlawful your mothers, meaning it was a custom in the Arab people. What they used to do is, you know, they, you know, if they wanted to completely divorce their wives, 
what they used to say. They used to say, you are like my mother. And this is called zihar. They used to do zihar, meaning they would, you know, keep this woman hanging. They would not divorce her and they would not treat her like a wife. So, you know, they, you know, which is, you know, keeping the woman lingering and waiting. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, has he not made your wives whom you declared unlawful your mothers? And has he not made your adopted sons, your true sons? So there are two commandments here that, you know, men cannot say, uh, uh, you know, that my, you know, to their wives that you are like my mother. And uh, so this is not correct in Islam. And then also about adoption. You know, um, you know how what is adoption and what to do adopting give uh, someone and giving them your name so there is two types of adoption one is adoption that is not allowed in islam and one is allowed not allowed is one that when you give the baby your name so the one who is adopting is going to give their name to their child and not tell them that who is that who are their parents and they are not their true parents and also because you know um, the thing is that the child who is adopted cannot inherit from your wealth. Yeah, the inheritance is going to go to his own children and you know to his relatives, but the adopted child cannot get inheritance. You know, and then you would say, how is it fair then they're going to this child? Then the person, remember we said that one third you are allowed to give whatever you want, whoever you want to give. So you can give that child from one third of your wealth, whatever you want to give. But the right of the heirs is according to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is allowed adoption? Allowed adoption is when you, you know, as long as you, you know, the adopted father is not, is not giving his name to that child. And, you know, you are, you know, what, what is it going to be the condition if, say, for example, you don't know the name of the father, then in that case, you name the, that child, the father's name is going to be Abdullah. Abdullah is the servant of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, okay, so you are not, we are not allowed. And there are other problems as well. You know, when you're going to adopt someone, then, you know, the problem is that if you, if it's a boy that you're going to adopt, unless you have sister who is you know breastfeeding and then you can you know choose uh, ask her to breastfeed this child so then you become the auntie you either become the khala or you can ask your brother's uh, wife to to breastfeed and then, then you become the auntie from the father's side from the, from your brothers so you know either way if you are going to make something otherwise you have to observe your hijab with them so be careful and this is merely, you know, because people used to say, you know, this is my adopted son. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also gave name to Zayd ibn Harith, uh, his name. And he was called Zayd ibn Muhammad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, no, you should, you cannot do that. That is merely saying by your mouth. It doesn't change the reality. And Allah says the truth and he guides onto the right way. So you see all these people who talk about, you know, this is my brother and that is brother. Or oh, your brother is your only your real brother. Your son is your, your, your son. You cannot have relations where you are saying, oh, this is my, I don't know. I don't know what they call, but they, they have a name for that. So this is my brother. And then you you behave as if the whole family is like your relative, and there is no um, you know no segregation. You 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 know that this is wrong. It's not allowed in Islam. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Call them by their names of their fathers." It is more just in the sight of Allah. But if you do not know their fathers, fathers, then that is they they are still your brothers in religion and those entrusted to you. There is no need, no blame upon upon you for that in which you have erred, but only what your hearts intended. And and is ever Allah forgiving and merciful? And in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he who claimed his fatherhood uh, for another one besides his own father knowingly, then that he was not his father to him, paradise is for, forbidden. Meaning you cannot, you know, someone cannot change their father's name to someone else's name. If you do that, then you are you are in serious trouble. Jannah is forbidden for you, according to the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu People also, you know, many people, they change their lineage just to show that they are of noble lineage. Be careful, you cannot, um, you cannot do that. Okay. May Allah protect us. Then I number six. Sorry. And uh, the Prophet is more worthy of the believers than themselves and his wives are in the position of their mothers and those of blood relations are more entitled of inheritance in the decree of Allah than other believers and the emigrants except that you may that you may do to to your close associates a kindness through bequest and that is in the book inscribed. So we are being told that in the, mother, the the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are our mothers. And that's why we call them Ummahatul Mu'mineen. 
you see, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so fair that, you know, that your relatives have the right to your inheritance. You see, when the Muslims migrated to Medina, brotherhood was, was established. So every Mahajir, the one who migrated from Mecca, was made the brother of the person in Medina. So here it is made clear that even though that uh, they are your brothers in religion, they don't inherit from you uh, and you don't inherit from them. You don't take their name and they don't take your name. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's only the inheritances for the blood relatives. And mentioned when we when we took from the Prophet their covenant and from you and from Nuh and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa, the son of Maryam, we took the, from them a solemn covenant. And what was the covenant? That you all are going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, the covenant from the prophets was that you're going to convey the message to the people. Yeah, and, yeah, and all of them were told that you have to tell about the coming of the final prophet. And then that he may question the truthful about their truth. And he has prepared for the deliver for the disbelievers a painful punishment. Oh, you have who have believed, remember the favor of Allah upon you when the armies came to attack and we sent upon them a wind and armies of angels. You do not see, you did not see, and ever is Allah of what you do seeing. So this is about the battle of the trench, okay? When 10,000 of the kuffar, 10,000 came and all these people around Mecca and people, some, some hypocrites from the Medina as well, joined them and they would, you know, they wanted to destroy the Muslims. And, and in opposition, there were only 3,000 Muslims. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the wind. And, you know, and the wind was so strong that, you know, they, they, did, they didn't end up in battle. So remember, when they came at you from above you and from below you. So, um, you know, and this is when uh, Salman Farsi, he was, um, he told uh, them to dig a trench. I suggest, you know, please listen because we're running out of time. Listen to the tafsir. Only then you can do justice to this uh, and and whatever is being portrayed to you now. Okay, we don't have time. So when uh, uh, so what happened? So when the believers remember Allah's father saying uh, when they came from uh, at you from above you and from below you and when the eyes shifted, meaning who's the believers' eyes in fear? Okay, because they saw these people attacking, and the hearts reached the throats, and you assumed about Allah various assumptions. You know they started. You know Allah's father saying Allah knows the the, the situation of the heart. Because they were so scared and it was cold at the time, you know, they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help will not come. There are there the believers were tested and shaken with a severe shaking. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put the believers to test with what? With worries, with fear, with anxiety. Everything came together. And remember when the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is disease said Allah and his messenger did not promise us except delusion. Meaning now these hypocrites have started talking. Yeah, when they saw this army, you know, where is the help for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They're trying to weaken the, you know, the motivation and, and discourage the believers. So where's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help going to come? And when the faction of them said, so the faction of uh, the, the hypocrites, they said, oh, people of Yathrab. Now see, they're addressing them. Yathrab was an old name. Okay, so because they had the intention, you know, when we're going to call and associate with them in the previous names, so they, we're going to divide. There's no stability for you here. So return home. And a party of them asked permission of the Prophet saying, indeed, our houses are unprotected while they are not exposed. They did not intend except to flee. So these hypocrites, when they saw this uh, battle, you know, and they saw this, the strength of the uh, enemy ahead, they started making excuses. And they're saying, look, our houses are, they're giving lame excuses. And you know, from one of the uh, seven major destructive sins, one of them is running away from the battle. Um, so, um, and if they had entered upon all, uh, upon from all its surrounding regions and fitna had been demanded of them, meaning really if the enemy came inside and these hypocrites were asked um, to betray the Muslims, they would, you know, what would they do? They would have done it and not hesitated over it except briefly. So Allah's father is exposing these hypocrites yeah and, and they had already and they had already promised allah before not to turn their backs and flee and ever is allah uh, and ever uh, and ever is the promise of allah question underline this my dears and the promise that we make to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be questioned okay 
And so be careful when you're making promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure you fulfill it. And say, never will fleeing benefit you if you should flee from death or killing. Then if you did, you would not, you would not be given enjoyment of the life uh, except for a little. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us all a wake up call as well. That, you know, you, you know, we cannot flee from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, if death is meant to come, death is meant to come. Say, who is it that can protect you from Allah if he intends for you an ill or intends for you a mercy? Then will you not find themselves besides Allah any protector or any helper? Already Allah knows the hinderers among you and the hypocrites who say to their brothers, come to us and do not go to the battle except for few. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who stay back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who are discouraging others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and Allah is the one who creates us such situations so that these people become, they, they become exposed. And, and so that people, the believers know where the loyalties of certain people lie. In ayah number 19, indisposed towards you. Um, and when the fear comes, you see them looking at you, their eyes revolving like one being overcome by death. But when fear departs, they lash you with sharp tongues, indisposed towards any good. Those have not believed. So Allah has rendered their deeds worthless and ever is that um, for Allah easy. So we find that one hip, one quality of hypocrite is that they have sharp tongues. May Allah protect us that we are not of those people who have sharp tongues. Um, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what I fear on, uh, for my ummah is the one, uh, is uh, what I fear for my ummah and the most is it's hypocrite, who is Ali Mulisan, meaning the one who knows how to convince people. The hypocrite who knows how to convince people is the person and the, and the, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he is most afraid of. They think the companies have not yet withdrawn. Yeah, because you know, even when the you know the 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 wind, strong winds, Allah blew strong winds, and the enemy left the siege after almost four thirty days. I beg your pardon. You know, this the hypocrites were still afraid. You know, because they were, you know, they are afraid of people, isn't it? They are not afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if the company should come again, they would wish they, they were in the desert among the Bedouins inquiring far from afar about your news. And if they should be among you, they would not fight except for a little. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslim, the believers, that these hypocrites are never going to help you. And they will not support you. So, and they will leave you with your struggles all by yourself. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا And there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers him. So these are three qualities uh, uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, and, and if, if, if we can benefit from them is the one who has hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hope in the last day and who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is it? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to Surah Al-Hasana لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Yes, so the one who has, sorry, I will just um, just give me a moment, please. So indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, you have a good example for whom who hopes in the last day, and um, who hopes in the meeting of Allah and in the last day and remembers Allah much. So if we do this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that these are the, the things that qualities that can benefit us. Alhamdulillah, we're going to end here because the next that is to follow, it's going to take a lot of our time, and I don't want to go over time. Alhamdulillah. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit. You are all going to read about the Battle of Trench and we will discuss the Battle of Trench and we'll discuss the severity that the Muslims faced, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, all the good was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive my mistakes. And, you know, the, the surahs that we read were a repetition, but the things that, you know, sister who's asking me about Luqman, Surah Luqman, the tafsir on Ulum Academy's website, see you in, in YouTube, you will be able to find the tafsir that I have done uh, on Surah Luqman. And you will thoroughly, inshallah, enjoy it and draw lessons from it. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan, my dears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mistakes. May Allah allow us to endure the tests of this life. And, and endure it with patience. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are 
constantly, um, you know, um, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and, and, and are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Um, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika shadwa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka, 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 wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.